MindLab, XP, Nocta Macro. Those are the three leaders in the metal detecting industry right now. But there's a tiny company from Bulgaria that I've had my eye on for a long time. That company is Nexus Metal Detectors. Now let's really get your attention. Nexus offers a variety of search coils, including this 30-inch monster. No, that's the small one. I mean, if you're going to dork out with a metal detector, you might as well go all the way. And what's really interesting is that you don't necessarily need a Nexus detector to connect the coil to. Now, what's the utility in having a coil that big on a metal detector? Now, I am going to hyperlink to this article on the MineLab website. It's a crash course in everything coils. The size of a coil can influence the detection depth and sensitivity of a metal detector. A good rule of thumb is the larger the coil, the more ground you can cover and the deeper it can go. This sounds like the be-all and end-all, but the extra depth comes at a price. Large coils have less sensitivity to smaller targets and greater susceptibility to electromagnetic interference, meaning you may have to notch that sensitivity right down depending upon the interference of the location. But look at what Nexus detectors can do with relatively normal sized coils. Good morning, my name is George Chorshev. Today I'm going to get a little bit on a hunt for the deepest possible coins on this site here behind me. I found a few Roman coins and they were all below depth of 12 inches. So today I'm going to use the next standard MP with a 13 inch double decoil in slightly elevated threshold level that will allow me to hear the very deepest of targets that I can find under the ground. With a silent threshold, the deepest of targets would be obscured a little bit, but with slightly with slight hum on the threshold like this those targets are going to be audible enough so I can actually pick up and let's see what is my luck today so in the comments section tell me about your use of threshold on your metal detector do you use it at all Here is another non ferro signal here. Listen to how sensitive this detector is. Look at how far away the shovel is, but you can still hear the shovel. Watch this. So I'm also gonna cross over it. I'm going to stop right here, and uh, this is going to be my first target. So I located four targets for now. I believe three of them to be non ferrous and one of them to be iron. So first I'm going to dig the non ferrous targets that I found last. Then I'm going to go to the iron, then possibly to the other two non ferrous targets if I don't get too tired from digging. If you have a 2,000 year old coin in the ground, is, is it possible to get too tired from digging? Oh good, he had coffee. Yeah, the deeper that you go, the wider that you have to make the plugs, it seems. It's really tough to isolate that deep signal and correctly pinpoint it center of the coil. It, it's tough. Especially when you're using bigger equipment, bigger coils. You can get these small targets that uh, appear to be blips from something super deep, but you can get them in the high layers. What he's doing is he's checking to see 
It was it one of those smaller targets or was it a deep target? It appears to be deep. The ground and it's still far away from the coil. If the signal appears continues to appear smooth, that means that the target is more than probably six to eight inches away from the search coil. So this is the gentleman who constructed this detector from what I understand on the website. And uh, what he's saying is uh, he can tell from his ears uh, when he is uh, close enough to it. So he's estimating that it's six to eight inches away. Nothing in the dirt outside. inside the signal got better let's see if a pinpointer will get anything nothing on the pinpointer for anybody new to metal detecting pinpointers are handy tools because really you get an inch to two inches and they let you know uh, by sticking that probe in the hole they let you know if you are within that range you know from zero to two inches and it beeps then Still nothing in the dirt. Huh. Still in the hole. Let's see the pinpointer again. The entire pinpointer is in the ground by about four inches. And this pinpointer is nine inches long so that's 13 inches depth and still nothing on the pinpointer 13 inches deep still no sign on the pinpointer remember it gives you one to two inches you'll get the faintest beep at like two inches as it gets closer it gets louder So the hole so far is approximately 15 inches deep, approximately 15 inches, let's see if we got close to the target enough. Nothing in the dirt. Inside. Let's see if I can get any signal with the pinpointer. Still nothing. It's the size of the object that's pulled. So Let's say that there's a soda can. This is not going to be a soda can. This is going to be something Roman. But you get a soda can at two feet. I'm not very impressed. That's a big object. But something that's like dime-sized or quarter-sized at this depth is extremely impressive. Nothing in the dirt. Well, it's there. In the middle of the hole and getting some signal from the pinpointer. Now I have to go 
to scrape the dirt really slow so I wouldn't damage whatever is there. Drainage and geology of the area affects how quickly a coin can sink. But you got to remember that with grass, grass leaves, they die and they turn to dirt. And that actually grows up over the coin. So it's a combination of those two factors. Okay, quick vent. In New York, we get what's called fill dirt. It helps with drainage, but it... Uh, <laughs> It pushes the layer down. It's it's usually put over natural dirt or mixed in with it. Ah, it, it like destroys history right there. Yeah, it destroys what we can pull. So I'm very close to whatever is in the hole. It appears to be a coin, a large one. Okay. Looks like a Roman Sesterzi, big one. Let me see how big is this coin. Well, 32 3 millimeters. And the coin was uncovered on, let's see what depth. Well, I'm going to need my ruler. So I'm going to put the ruler here. And see if I can measure the depth from the bottom of the hole where the coin was found. Now, looks like Four to seven centimeters. For anybody watching in the States, 47 centimeters equals about 18 and a half inches. It's important for you to know that this was not paid in any way, like Nexus did not contact me. Uh, I have a website called iratemetaldetectors.com and I want to know as much as possible. I've identified about 150 different companies out there that sell metal detectors in the world so I have my work cut out for me but this is one that has really stood out I, I watched this video a few years ago and remembered this what's important for you to know is this is not a simultaneous multi-frequency metal detector now what's also important for you to know is I am a believer in SMF it started with the Equinox. Look, I know it goes further back than that with the full band spectrum and such. It was perfected by the Equinox. You swung that, you found targets that you did not know were there with other detectors. And it really made a huge difference. But this, this is not a simultaneous multi-frequency metal detector. What you saw today was a display of raw power. 
I don't know if this is possible in dirt like we have in New York where there's like 10,000 bottle caps per square inch. That's an exaggeration. But it, the New York's dirt is littered. And that dirt that we saw it pulled from was just, it was so clean. I can't speak on the mineralization of the soil where it was tested, but you know, I, I'm intrigued by this company. It's very much on my radar. And let's take a quick look at some of the detectors that they offer. So I'm gonna click on products and they seem to have a few offerings, uh, standard MP, standard MK2. Uh, Credo DDM, the Pathfinder is one of the box metal detectors, and they got their own coils. Standard MP looks like this. It has a very MimeLab Sovereign look to it, all of the dials. I kind of like that. Products, let's go to the next one. MK2, and look at this coil. This is They just have wild, wild coils. Credo. And they have descriptions down here. And finally, we'll show you the uh, the Pathfinder. Yeah, this is the box metal detectors for super deep. But you're not going to get coins with these, I believe. I like coins and I like rings. So I'm intrigued and I'm going to reach out uh, to see if we could get more. Uh, I wrote them an email and invited them uh, if they want to correspond. Uh, perhaps we could get them in a live stream and uh, my viewers uh, can ask questions. They proved that they have an extremely capable detector. And simultaneous multi-frequency, it is the buzzword of today. Yes, I do believe in it, but I, I want to keep an open mind. And uh, I have more questions. Hopefully we get answers. Thanks for watching, everybody.